Spotlight is a production of CTNY, the Catholic television network of Youngstown. It seeks to spotlight people, places, and events from around the Diocese of Youngstown that promote the new gospel of joy called for by Pope Francis. Your program host is Father James Corda. Hello and welcome to Spotlight. I'm Father Jim Corda. Today I'm going to talk with Dr. Lou Zona, who is the Executive Director of the Butler Institute of American Art. Welcome again to Spotlight. It's a pleasure to be here and excuse the mask. Uh, uh, just, I guess, uh, these are different times, aren't they? They are, Doctor, and no problem. We all know what uh, wonderful looks you have, <laughs> and so we thank you for your presence today. <laughs> you know, the last time you were here, we had wonderful discussion on uh, the butler and its history. Uh, we know that the butler recently celebrated 100 years, which had to be very significant, not only for the butler, uh, but also for our community. Tell us about that. Well, he, this fellow Butler was a special man. Uh, he was uh, found one, one of the founders of the Youngstown Sheet and Tube Company where he made his fortune mm -hmm. and became one of the first serious collectors of American art. Uh, he was a serious collector and, and built this collection of, of wonderful American paintings mm -hmm. and decided that he needed a place to house this collection. Actually, what inspired it really was the fact that it, his house burned down on Wick Avenue mm -hmm. and he lost part of his collection, including, I understand, a wonderful Remington and, and the butler is now without a Remington. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, he, he put together a, a, the beginnings of a, f a fabulous collection and then his, his uh, his son and then grandson uh, added to the collection and then I came in and we've tried to fill gaps as best we can. Mm -hmm. But in, in, in recent years, our focus has been primarily on physical plant and programming. Mm -hmm. uh, with the, the, our collection, of course, is, speaks for itself. It's one of the great American art mm -hmm. collections. And, and I wanna focus on that for, for a moment, okay. if we could. You know, it is the Institute of American Art. Uh, oftentimes when we go into museums, they uh, are very diversified, mm -hmm. and yet the butler is focused on that. Why has that been, and why has that been the strength? You know, it's, it's interesting, Father. He, the founder of the museum in 1919 stood on the steps mm -hmm. of the butler and, and said, you know, we lead the world in engineering, the, the sciences and entrepreneurship. Someday we will lead the world in the arts as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, was, he was predicting what would happen. And today, of course, uh, American art is, is, is cherished. Sure. Uh, yeah. our, our collection is considered to be uh, perhaps the finest uh, in the country of, of purely American art. Mm -hmm. So he believed in American artists uh, mm -hmm. at a time when his contemporaries, father, were going to Europe to buy Monet and Renoir. Sure. He mm -hmm. was in, in America buying William Merritt Chase and John Singer Sargent. Yeah. Are there any other museums in the country that focus on American art primarily or uh, as a whole? There, there, there was a time when there were only three of us. Uh, the, the, the Whitney in New York, mm -hmm. the Corcoran in Washington, and the Butler. Mm -hmm. Now, so many museums realize that, that they are going to have a hard time uh, mm -hmm. with Japanese art or Russian art, uh, that, yeah. that American art is readily available, and it's, and it's darn good. Mm -hmm. And so museums like the Akron Art Museum uh, are, are American, and mm -hmm. just every every state has it seems has a, a share of American art. Yeah, you've been with the museum uh, ten years shy of half of its lifetime. Uh, oh. What have you uh, discovered in your long career as curator of the museum uh, that has changed, that has made some significant um, updates for the Butler art itself? Well. Uh, the, uh, I focused on the physical plan, I mentioned that. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, the, the idea of us preserving uh, 
th this art as a treasure uh, necessitated our looking into an air conditioning system, a humidification mm -hmm. system, uh, a, a state-of-the-art fire alarm system, security systems. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's that kind of thing that we have really progressed in. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, of course, we, we've added facilities as well. Uh, the be Beecher Court, uh, we needed a, a public space where, where dinners could be held and lectures could be given, and so mm -hmm. we contacted the, the wonderful Beecher family uh, mm -hmm. who, su who supported us early on, and mm -hmm. we were able to put on a, a West Wing edition and then eventually uh, other additions, including the acquisition of the f former First Christian Church Father, mm -hmm. which has become a, a wonderful performance uh, space right. for us. And mm -hmm. the, the congregation had dwindled, and uh, they were so happy that mm -hmm. the butler was interested in, in preserving mm -hmm. the building, in which we've, we've done. We've also put an air conditioning system in there, and. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it, it's, it's been good. We've got about two minutes left of our first segment. Uh, why are those partnerships and relationships within the community are valuable? Why are they valuable and how has that really helped the Butler over the years? Well, you know, we, we've, we've partnered with a, a lot of other institutions mm -hmm. and that's been very important. Uh, but, my feeling is that, 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 we're, that we, we strive not to be elitist. So mm -hmm. many cultural institutions are perceived as being elitist, and, sure. and we're not, and I, and I wanted that, that perception not to exist. Mm -hmm. So we've gone out of our way, really, to, to uh, create programmings for the family. As a matter of fact, uh, the craft show that we did every year was a way that Youngstown kicked off the Christmas mm -hmm. season. Well, we, we're not having it this year for obvious reasons, mm -hmm. um, but we wanted to do something Christmassy for the families. And, and so we, we discovered this exhibition, uh, a humorous exhibition of an artist named Wheeler mm -hmm. who takes Santa Claus images and inserts them into famous paintings. So there, mm -hmm. there is a snap the whip with Santa Claus holding the, the mm -hmm. and it's, it's really quite fun. It's a lot yeah. of fun. Yeah. So th that's the way we think, and mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, it's been appreciated. Yeah, we're gonna talk more about that in a moment, but we need to take a quick break. So please stay with us, we'll be right back. In this biblical year of the Pauline family, Renew yourself through the study and reading of the Word of God in the Sacred Scriptures. Deepen the Word of God in your life with the help of Scripture scholars like the late Father Jerome Murphy O'Connor in his CD presentation on the life of St. Paul. This riveting presentation draws upon a lifetime of scholarship and reflection, challenging the traditions and contemporary understanding of St. Paul. For more information, contact Brother Dominic at 330-533-2243 or email brdomctny at aol.com. Seventh year, Cristo Rey Jesuit High School. One of the things that's unique about this school is that our kids work five days a month at offices in downtown Chicago to pay for their education. We got telephone calls the first day thanking us for sending us those kids to their companies. 95% of our kids are the first ones in their families to finish high school, and 87% of our graduates are in college right now. No one believed that it would be as successful as it is. Well, it's obviously caught on, and we're very, very excited about it. Welcome back to our show. I'm talking with Dr. Lou Zona from the Butler Institute of American Art. You know, Dr. Zona, two of the words that come to my mind uh, when I think of the Butler, but also when I think of you, are art and faith. Mm -hmm. How do those two go together and why are they important in your life? Well, uh, certainly faith is, is, uh, is very important in my life. But, but you know, Father, the, the, the creative process is is 
is reminiscent or, or parallels, I think, the ultimate creative process, which is the creation of the world by our Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, so many great paintings, so many great works of art have been inspired mm -hmm. by faith. Mm -hmm. I, I would, I, if I could go back in time, mm -hmm. I would love to have been in that group of people in Italy going in to see the Sistine ceiling for the very mm -hmm. first time. They say that people drop to their knees because they, they believe that only God could have created this mm -hmm. wonderful masterwork. And mm -hmm. I think for the most part that still is the situation. Yeah. But like I always tell my students, uh, Jackson Pollock was not necessarily a man of, of t traditional faith, mm -hmm. but here, here's, a, here's an abstract painter who was so inventive that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think that also counts. Okay. Uh, he, he, his, his, the creative process, uh, creating something from nothing mm -hmm. uh, is, mm -hmm. is the ultimate act of, of I mean, obvious. You know, it's interesting, as you were talking, I was trying to think of an experience that I had many, many years ago uh, visiting Rome for the first time and walked into the Sistine Chapel, hush ushered in with hundreds and hundreds of people and looking around, wondering why we were there. Had no clue because it was dark, it was dingy, and people were just looking around and being ushered out. And it dawned on us that we just went through the Sistine Chapel, but never noticed anything of the ceiling oh, wow. because of it was dark and gloomy. Uh, several years later, I had an opportunity to go back after its restoration. Right. Walking in was a completely different experience. You walk in with a crowd of people, everyone was gazing upward. So the, the, just a transformation because of some uh, skilled work of, of artists who restored uh, Michelangelo's just triumph. Yeah, right. a and how art really captures not only the mind and the eyes, but the soul itself. And why does art do that to us, or why is art important in our life? Well, I think it, it, it illustrates w w what we normally would not uh, ex experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and as you were talking about the, your second visit to the Sistine uh, Chapel, there's the, altar, uh, the painting be behind the altar, mm -hmm. which, which says so much, uh, the Last Judgment. And there, Christ is raising the believers into heaven, mm -hmm. and those that are not, he is casting them. Mm -hmm. It's the first time that we see the Christ image as an angry person, right. you know? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But I've always been fascinated by that painting. I'm also yeah. fascinated by the fact that Michelangelo included himself right. and the Pope <laughs> <laughs> with the group. Jo of course, Julius mm -hmm. II, Pope Julius sure. II and, and Mike Michelangelo mm -hmm. uh, were, were very close, yeah. but they also mm -hmm. had problems with one another. Yeah. Let's talk uh, in our last few minutes of our middle segment now about um, uh, humankind personally, you know, I'd like to think that all of us are artists in some way. You know, we may not be able to paint or to sculpt right. or, uh, or to cast, but we all are artists and God has given us some gift mm -hmm. to create and to hand on. Do you see that in, in humanity? Uh, I, I, I do. Uh, uh. Uh, in, in my own family, I have a daughter who is, uh, just has very rare talents, and uh, neither my wife or I mm -hmm. uh, have those e e exact talents. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, we have other other uh, other talents uh, mm -hmm. that that we. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, anyway, I yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting also, uh, I'd like to go back to the celebration that happened in uh, 2019. Uh, there was a big moment uh, for the butler. Uh, anything else significant that happened back then that you'd like to highlight for us in celebration of the 100 years of, of the butler? 
one of the, one of the things that we did when we had we had we had this special evening, uh, which which was so beautiful, uh, that uh, I, I stood up on the stage and I had, I'd done a little research and found out the kinds of things that happened in 1919, mm -hmm. uh, that. Uh, including this uh, horrible epidemic. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, the shoeless Joe Jackson, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. just lots of really interesting things. Uh, yeah. And it's interesting that a, that a town like ours, uh, industrial as it was, created this, this beautiful gem for us. Uh, all really going back to the heart of its founder. Uh, what was in his heart, do you yeah, think, that really and, and we, led he, him to that? He, he obviously wanted some, he wanted a special building, so he was inspired mm -hmm. by the Italian Renaissance mm -hmm. and the, that building with its, with its columns mm -hmm. and, and, and other, other elements. Uh, it pays tribute to the founder who, who, who believe that America uh, had so much to offer artistically, and mm -hmm. it's time for us to, to, uh, to note that. Yeah. Um, he, was a, he was a visionary. Joseph Green Butler, Jr. was a true visionary. And uh, his original collection was 32 paintings. Today, Father, there's yeah. uh, 2,200 uh, paintings. Yeah. In the, mostly paintings, but mm -hmm. prints and drawings mm -hmm. and everything else. Mm -hmm. um, one of the interesting things also is, is, is uh, our association with the university. We're not mm -hmm. part of the university, mm -hmm. but, but the energy that the, that the students bring to the, to the butler sure. every day, uh, the Jambar, the, the student newspaper, mm -hmm. uh, did a poll uh, and they found out that uh, that the favorite first date place was the butler. <laughs> and we we, sure. we like that. And uh, and as you visit the butler, you, you see young couples walking around. It's it's free, mm -hmm. it's beautiful, mm -hmm. it's humorous. It it has so much to offer, and uh, the kids take advantage of it. We're going to talk more in a moment. We have to take a quick break. Stay <laughs> okay. with us. We'll be right back. In this biblical year of the Pauline family, renew yourself through the study and reading of the Word of God in the sacred scriptures. Deepen the Word of God in your life with the help of scripture scholars like the late Father Jeff Mickler, who communicated God's love and presence in his DVD series called St. Paul, The Man and His Message. In his informative and comprehensive approach to the writings and life of the Apostle Paul, you will be transported to ancient Tarsus and the many Christian communities to which Paul wrote and ministered. For more information, contact Brother Dominic at 330-533-2243 or email brdomctny at aol.com. My name is Sister Mary Claudina, and I run a home for abandoned children. I want to take care of children who have no parents, because luckily I come from a very loving family. There are, there are eight of us. We learn to care for each other, to love each other, to fight among each other, just to be a family. And I think that's what I, um, I learned from home, and I wanted to, to share that with children who do not have that opportunity. Welcome back to our show. I'm talking with Dr. Lou Zona from the Butler Art. You know, Dr. Zona, I'm sure that over the many years that you've been affiliated with the Butler, but also your long life, you've uh, been inspired by, by people, especially by artists. Right. Are there any artists that have really inspired you in a special way that you'd like to share with us? Yeah, there, there's a, an artist who's still living. He's, he's about 90 years old now. His name is Jasper Johns. Uh, a southerner who, who went to New York City in around 1956 or so and literally changed the nature of the art world. He was a, 
uh, after World War II from, from 1945 to just about 1960, abstract art had dominated. Well, this, this fellow comes to New York and uh, I can't identify at all with the abs with abstraction mm -hmm. and reintroduces recognizable subject matter to art and becomes an inspiration to, to so many other artists. Uh, I admire him greatly. I got a chance mm -hmm. to, uh, to spend a little bit of time with him mm -hmm. and uh, I, I treasure those moments sure. with this great man. Yeah. But uh, he would be yeah. right up there. You know, oftentimes when we think of artists, our, our mind, as you had mentioned earlier on, really kind of goes back to Europe, uh, the Renaissance, that was really kind of like the pinnacle of it all. Uh, there's lots of movies, lots of shows that are out there that, that depict those times, but those weren't always easy times. Uh, and, and we find ourselves, history kind of repeating itself. You know, we find ourselves in different situations that cause us to turn inwards to look at the tools that God has given us, whether it's our faith, our wherewithal, our know-how, to make the best of the situation. Uh, of course, in, in the midst of this pandemic that we find ourselves, the butler has done that as well. What are some of the things that you've installed that will continue in the future to um, invite and welcome people to the butler? Well, we, we really have focused on programming, which includes a very active docent program. We have about 100 volunteers that we've trained to walk mostly children's groups through the museum. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's, a you know, we're getting calls. We, we, we've had to stop tours because of the, the groupings. Mm -hmm. But our docents have been calling saying, when can we come back mm -hmm. kind of thing. And mm -hmm. so I feel strongly that those kinds of educational programs, especially for children, are mm -hmm. going to remain uh, uh, as a kind of a lasting uh, testament. You know, it's interesting as you were talking, and when you do talk, these images come into my mind and my own personal experiences, and I probably have shared with you uh, this uh, at one time or another, but I think I was in fifth grade uh, art class, and I had taken uh, classes at Butler Art on Saturdays. <laughs> and I remember there was an exhibit and our paintings were being shown for the first time. And I think the following week, our parents and grandparents came and saw it. And of course, everyone uh, on the block and on in the east side was saying, oh, Jim had a little uh, painting at the Butler that was featured <laughs> in the Butler. And of course, you know, it was, it was a fifth grader's rendition of, of, of uh, his backyard or something like that. So, but, but those experiences that we have really draw people yeah. and, and engage people and keep them excited about, about life and faith and art. Um, what are some of those things that have inspired you over the years that kind of kept you moving towards, uh, towards God? Well, I had uh, beautiful parents. Uh, my mother, Somebody said to my mother when my father had passed away and we were at the funeral home, and he, she's not crying. And so one of the neighbors said, Catherine, you've been, you've been with him for, for so many decades and you're not crying. Why should I cry? I'm going to be seeing him uh, shortly, you know? It took mm -hmm. my mother face, it was black and white. Mm -hmm. It was just, there was no question, no question. Mm -hmm. One of my, one of my, great memories is I'm in one room of our house and I could hear my mother uh, saying prayers that she would say mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. And I remember the, 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 one, the one line, uh, the, the beautiful cross of Christ, uh, which she would repeat over and over and over mm -hmm. again as mm -hmm. part of the part of her r ritual almost yeah. every morning. Sure, and, and that was uh, made vivid uh, by her faith, but also her belief in uh, eternal life and, uh, and God, God himself. You know, it's interesting as we um, grew up uh, in, in the Catholic faith and in the Catholic Church, the church has really been a patron of the arts from its beginning. Absolutely. Uh, why has that been important for us as part of the church? Well, 
course, the, the educational element uh, of, of, the, of, the, of the arts. Mm -hmm. Uh, back, of course, when when uh, most people were, were were illiterate, they could mm -hmm. see the, the stories of the Bible portrayed on the walls of the church. Yeah. And of course, when the Protestant Reformation happened, it was pretty much the end of uh, church patronage. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. pri uh, uh, private c citizens uh, became mm -hmm. the patrons of Rembrandt mm -hmm. and, and other. Yeah. Uh, Protestant uh, artists, mm -hmm. but it's an interesting history um, mm -hmm. that has been written in, in, in the visual arts. Yeah. In our last two minutes, uh, Dr. Zona, what would you like to share with the folks that are with us, not just about the anniversary, the significant anniversary that the Butler celebrated in 2019, but uh, what lies ahead and what can they anticipate and expect from the Butler? One of the things, uh, Again, we're going to continue to to explore possibilities with the programming, but something that w we're working on and we really haven't announced it yet is is that we're going to, uh, thanks to the generosity of, of, of people in our community, we're going to be able to put on another little expansion mm. um, that will that will face one of our great works of art right toward Wick Avenue. Mm. So mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a major uh, undertaking and uh, we're looking forward to that. Um, but so many things, I, I, I don't take vacations. To, of course, my, my, my wife is not real thrilled about that. Sure. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I enjoy w what I do, mm -hmm. I, I love what I do and we're constantly planning. Something that, that is going to be happening, and we're going to be announcing it soon, is that a, a museum in California is giving us all of their art. Mm -hmm. Now, these are not paintings. These, these are works of art that are based upon technology. Yeah. As, as you know, in visiting the Butler, we have a whole wing devoted to technologically based art. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to add another 100 pieces yeah. to that collection, mm -hmm. thanks to the Vermont Foundation. Uh, out, out of uh, California. That's so wonderful news. Yeah, the, the, uh, the trucks will be pulling in with this work uh, next week. That's very good and we uh, anticipate uh, seeing those, experiencing those and we thank you Dr. Zona for your long uh, mm -hmm. career and history as a curator there, executive director. Uh, you really have brought the museum to where it is today and thank we you. thank you for your dedication. Uh, Remember to take a vacation, though, at one point <laughs> to make your wife happy. But we appreciate your presence here. As always, God bless you. Thanks so much, Father. And thank you for being with us. Have a good day, and God be with you. Spotlight has been a production of CTNY, the Catholic Television Network of Youngstown. Your program host was Father James Corda.